Mina, Kumbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. I'm gonna get back into Samuel at some point. Um, I'm not trying to neglect the story of Samuel and the story of Saul. There are definitely important biblical tidbits there that I want to bring out and share with y'all. But some of the things that I feel the Lord was speaking to me personally, I want to share with you some of my own thoughts and reflections. And while it may not be directly biblical, maybe just my own ponderings and musings, you're also here not just... I, bleh, bad English. Bad English like always. You're not just here for the biblical content. You're also here to get to know me a little bit, right? Right? Right, guys? Okay. <laughs> if you're not here to get to know me as well, then... Oh well, you're going to get to know me a little bit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. This is a very popular one, especially in the charismatic churches where I love to be. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine, be filled with the Spirit. That's a popular verse. That is some popular stuff right there. And that's something I feel like the Lord's really been communicating to me recently. Um, there's so... Talk about... I could probably do an entire month's worth of sermons on this, on being filled with the Spirit. And there's, I mean... It's kind of the foundation of the whole Pentecostal slash charismatic movement, right? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> if you look it up in the Greek, you compare the word uh, baptism in Acts chapter 2 to the Greek word filled here, it's the same word. Um, you should be able to look that up on Google. I looked it up via a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, but so again, I, I want to say Google is your friend. And if Google's not your friend, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance is your friend. As old as it is, maybe it's on Google at this point. I don't know. I'm not being helpful at all. Ah, But <laughs> you look up the Greek word, it's the exact same word. To be baptized or to be filled, it's the exact same word. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is so important to Pentecostal culture and life, it's the same word here. Be filled with the Spirit. And it's a command to all Christians to be filled with the Spirit, just to cover a beginning or a foundation. And there's so much more I want to get into. Ah, and I set the timer because I knew I could go over so easily if I didn't set the timer, so I'm going to try to keep this a little bit quick and concise. But being filled with the Spirit is a command to every single believer, and I don't care what part of the Christian spectrum you're in, whether you're Lutheran or Methodist or Baptist or Presbyterian, or Pentecostal, or holiness, or non-denominational, we're all commanded to be filled with the Spirit. So, now this presents a little bit of a conundrum for the non-charismatic, non-spirit-filled, I put that in quotations for now, members of the Church of God. And I don't mean the denomination Church of God, that's another denomination, but the Church of God as a whole, all of us, all who are believers in Christ, we're all commanded to be filled with the Spirit. Now. We all have the Holy Spirit as believers. The Bible makes that abundantly clear, that if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. But we're commanded for something more here. We're commanded to be filled with the Spirit. And if you look into the Greek a little bit deeper, we're not just commanded to be filled with the Spirit, we are commanded to be filled with the Spirit continually. The particular Greek word here has a connotation of continuousness. So I, would, I want to say there that the plot thickens, I'm going to have to speak on this a little bit more because I am almost at four minutes here and that's kind of, I've already, I don't want to keep doing five minute plus segments here. I want to keep it to like five minutes and under. So I'm going to end that there for now. As a charismatic, obviously I believe in speaking in tongues, the gifts of the Spirit, the whole nine yards. But the filling of the Spirit is something that's commanded to, to all Christians, something that's supposed to continuously happen. So it's not just enough that we become Christians and get the Holy Spirit. There is something after that. There's something. And those of you who are watching who aren't charismatic or Pentecostal, I want to challenge you that there is more. Biblically, there is more. Look it up. If you think I'm wrong, you think I'm lying to you, you don't believe me, look this up. I believe that you are wrong. I believe there is more. You don't just get saved, you have the Holy Spirit and boop, that's it. No, there's another work that this Holy Spirit is doing. And there is a filling that occurs that isn't just 
salvation. One time, poof, and that's it. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen continuously. And that's over five minutes. I'm out of time. Thank you guys very much for watching this. Look forward to more videos in this little series soon. I love you, and God bless.